Uh, radioactive tracers. Well, barium, barium is a good x-ray absorber. They don't use radioactive barium, though. They just use barium, like a barium sulfate cocktail to absorb x-rays. Barium has a lot of electrons. Um, this is called uh, labeling. You know, um, you can label certain atoms with radioactive isotopes so that you can follow them through a, uh, a reaction to figure out what the mechanism is. And so if you're trying to prove a mechanism, one of the ways you could do it is using radioactive uh, Euclid to label. Analytical chemistry. Yeah. Neutrons are used for a lot of different things. One is neutron activation. I, was, I saw this. They were analyzing some painting using neutron activation. So what they do is, you know, certain um, nuclei will absorb, ab absorb a certain neutron, or not certain, will, will absorb neutrons and create a radioactive nuclide. And that radioactive nuclide decomposes and gives a characteristic decay uh, signal, like either particle with a certain energy or light with a certain energy. And so they can figure out what the elemental composition is. So this is just elemental analysis using neutrons. Whoa. Neutrons will cause food to become radioactive. You know, if you bombard this with neutrons, and the neutrons get absorbed in the nucleus, screwing up the ratio, making these atoms radioactive. However, um, irradiation is not using neutrons. Do you know what they use for irradiation? X-rays. Well, if they use X, X-rays are not going to make the atoms radioactive. X-rays will knock electrons off or do other things, but um, the strawberries are not going to be radioactive afterwards. And so these have been irradiated, these are non-irradiated. Yeah. So shelf life, increasing the shelf life by killing off fungus or whatever else. Ew. Oh. This guy, uh, volume's up here. Is the volume up? Uh, this is this guy has been studying Fukushima, and uh, he's the one who's saying that there are two types of explosions that happened at Fukushima. And so he's going to try to demonstrate it. So he has a hydrogen generator there. The hydrogen generator, uh, this is homemade. He's doing this in his backyard. This guy's a nuclear engineer. Okay. Uh, this, he, had, he, had, he was an executive at Three Mile Island um, and some other nuclear power plants. So he's been in the nuclear industry for a long time. And then um, he's Arnie Gunderson. But, you know, his message is... Uh, well, anyway, his hydrogen generator there, he has some uh, galvanized nails and he's pouring some pool acid, pool acid being hydrochloric yeah. acid muriatic acid and so the galvanized nails are going to be eaten up and H plus is the oxidizer you're going to form hydrogen gas so all those bubbles there's hydrogen gas his audio is much better I'll just uh, try to dub it as best I can and so he's filling up this two-liter um, bottle here with hydrogen gas 
to demonstrate uh, what a hydrogen So hydrogen's lighter, he's saying, than uh, air. So the hydrogen's rising and pushing the air out. And so pretty soon that whole thing's gonna be filled with, you can see the chunks of zinc have broken off. You see all the white stuff in there too. Now how, is it, how is it broken off? It's just a rough coating of zinc on the nails. And so the zinc is gonna be attacked first and then the, uh, and then the iron. The zinc has a higher oxidation potential. <laughs> oh, some, I guess somebody did this. Oh, I should have got the original video without the commentary. No, you're blood. And suggesting this reaction might be really boring. Uh, I wonder what's going on with the audio. This is just how he's going to ignite it. Yeah, he's just gonna take a match. That looks dangerous. So now the, the two liter bottle should be filled with hydrogen. He unplugs the little thing up there. It's gonna pop. He should be wearing safety goggles. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is a nice uh, hydrogen air flame. <laughs> That's just the rate that it's... Yeah, it's just living. slow burn right now, the hydrogen. Slow burn because this is fuel rich. This is um, a lot of fuel, not much air. You know the stoichiometry. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh well. The, yeah. This he made water. That's right. You know when I saw that, then I was reminded of this video because this video predates that movie by, by years. So maybe they were watching this too. Because, uh, but that was much more spectacular, the explosion. I hope you guys aren't disappointed with this one. I know he's, he knows his stuff, but it's the scary one. Well, he's not a chemist, he's a nuclear chemist. Actually, he's a nuclear engineer. That little balloon was enough to shake the whole room, so I the bottle. Well, look, I don't know. He's in. Uh, I, nothing seems to be happening. In fact, look at it, it's going out. There it goes. Oh. Uh, that was the explosion, but. Yeah, they're going to do it again. Wow. That's why you can't do it. And it's loud. <laughs> He's a good actor. He held tight, though. He didn't flinch too much. He didn't flinch at all. Look at that. He knew that was going to happen. Yeah, he knew that was going to happen. That's why he had his face in there. That's why he had his face in there. Show that. Not even hydrogen scares me. <laughs> yeah, the volume on the computer is up. Oh, no, it's all the way down. Oh, is it? Right there. Reminder <laughs> this November, we're asking for your financial support so we can help. I'm giving you money for this. Oh, sorry. That's right. So, what you did is you turned up the volume on the YouTube, but you didn't turn up the volume on the computer. The situation is not stable at all. <laughs> well, well, that's a hydrogen deflagration. That's the smaller of the two shockwaves. That's what happened inside unit one. When you get oxygen coming in and hydrogen in just the right amount, two to one, they combine to form water vapor, and they create a lot of heat and an explosion. Now what's TEPCO doing to avoid this? The containment is leaking. We know the containment is leaking. Well, let me show you another video of his. Right. Um, you can see all his videos. Actually, there's some very interesting ones because um, how is the hydrogen generated? So what he did was he took some uh, fuel rods and then heated them up. You know, and if you heat the fuel rods in the presence of water, then it's going to generate a lot of hydrogen gas. What's it present you? Uh, I don't know. Percent, a reaction like that is going to have a pretty decent percent yield. Uh, 
how they reorganize them. All right, we'll, we'll take a break now and then start. Let me find this video.